Also for culture, um, when people ask you to eat food, you usually you should eat it. Um, they get really offended if you don't eat it, and they they'll usually get offended if you don't eat all of it. Although they understand more so for foreigners that maybe you're not used to their food or you can't eat as much as they expect you to. Um, but typically, and I, I made a promise, whatever someone puts in front of me, I'm going to eat it. Um, and then if I have something that I know makes me sick, I'll let them know, hey, I can't eat this because it makes me sick. But typically, you always eat whatever they give you. Um, oftentimes, when you go visit a family for the first time, or even a family that you know, they'll go and buy you soda and crackers. And even though you know they probably can't afford it and it's not in their budget, um, you can't refuse it because it's just disrespectful. So if anyone offers you soda or drinks or crackers or biscuits or whatever they offer you, you usually try to drink all of it and eat all of it just to show them the respect because they've made the sacrifice and they've spent money that they really can't afford to spend on you. Um, it, would be, it would be hard if you're, you know, sometimes people would get us when we're fasting um, and so you have to tell them. You don't want to tell them you're fasting like, ah, oh, no, thank you. You know, you try to catch them. You you can kind of see when they're going to leave and go soda they'll, or go get soda. They'll hand money to their daughter and send them to the shop or something. And so you'll catch them like, oh, are you going to get soda? You know, we're, we, we can't drink it right now. And so if we could try to catch them before they bought it, they'd be grateful and they'd understand that we're fasting. Um, they're very, very familial. They'll drop almost anything to go. Uh, people will drop anything to go visit their family. If their family's sick, if their family needs help, whatever it is, um, people will visit their family and they love their family a lot. Um, one of the biggest things or challenges is that people send their kids away to boarding schools because it's the way for them to get the best possible education. Um, so we'd be teaching families and their kids would disappear for four months as they go to some boarding school really far away and then they'd come back and like oh, okay they're back for three weeks and they're going to go back again for four more months uh, so that was kind of hard and it was worrisome because the students would not have any formal instruction and usually the boarding school would be a catholic or protestant and they'd be forced to go to that church every sunday um, and so it'd be hard for them if they didn't have a strong testimony um something that was kind of a joke is if if you were teaching someone you couldn't find them you'd say oh they probably went to the village uh, just because people would randomly disappear and like oh, and then come back through because oh i was in the village visiting my family you know they'd give no warning it's just oh i was in the village or i went to the village or someone would disappear like hey where's this person oh he went to the village when's he coming back i don't know you know just kind of <laughs> people just go to the village and the village was usually their home village where they were born and raised and people have you know because it if you live in the cities and you can't afford rent, then you go back to the village because you own the land there and you can live off the land there. You have what they call a garden, which is it's not more. It's more of like fields of food, not just a garden. What we think of, it's just like oh, I have my tomatoes and my zucchini, and I'm growing my own food. They grow actual food that they can live off of in their garden. Um, so when people started struggling financially, they would move to their village and stay there. Um, other culture. Um, it was kind of weird at first getting used to it, but people will shake your hands and they'll hold your hand while they're talking to you the whole time. So you'll shake someone's hand and they'll just hold it there for 10, 15, 20 seconds. And you just kind of was like, what's going on here? And uh, it took a while to get used to that, um, but then it was fine. <laughs> um, it's hard to think of stuff off the top of my head. There's so much culture there. It's, it's great. I love it so much. So you really learn to love the people and everything that they do and even if they sometimes frustrate you whether they're not accepting the gospel or they're being stubborn um, it's, it's great another joke that missionaries would have is oh yeah I'm coming in five minutes because you know people would say that you know you'd make an appointment with someone for three o'clock and they'd you'd call them at 250 and they are you coming like oh yeah I'll be there in five minutes and then you call them at 315 it's like oh yeah I'll be there in 10 minutes like but 30 minutes ago you said you'd be here in five minutes like oh yeah yeah I'm coming I'm coming and then you call them and then you know you just after 30 minutes they're not there he's like okay I'm giving up and then you call them oh sorry I was coming and then I stopped coming <laughs> I was just like are you kidding me? <laughs> but so that's another joke that missionaries go, Oh yeah, I'm coming. I'll be there in five minutes. You know, you say that when you're 10, 20 minutes away <laughs> because they, they say what they want, you know, what you want to hear. It's like, Oh, he wants to hear that I'm almost there. So I'm going to say I'm almost there, even though I'm not. <laughs> so that's uh, very common for, uh, for people there.